No matter what kind of boat you own, sooner or later, you're going to have to dip a paintbrush in a paint can. I'm Ken Chrysler, Senior Editor of Power & Motor Yacht Magazine. I'd like to welcome you to PMY TV. Today's project is restoring this fiberglass dinghy. Now, as you can readily see, she's in desperate need of a really good washing. But there are other problems. There's crazing along the hull, and there's lots of dings on the skeg. We have to take care of that first. Now, before we get started, I'm going to switch over to Jim Seidel, Assistant Marketing Manager for Interlux Paints, to run through the procedure and the products we're going to be using to get this thingy back in shape. Okay, today what we're going to be using is we're going to start with the boat soap to clean it off, get most of the uh, most of the big residue off. Any stains, we'll use our heavy-duty stain remover to take those stains out. Once the hull is clean. We'll get the wax off, any residual wax that might be there, Teflon, silicone, suntan lotion with the fiberglass surface prep. Once we get it all dry and clean, then we'll start using the epiglass epoxy. We'll make it into a, probably a consistency of ketchup. We'll, sque we'll squeegee that into the crazing and cracking. Then we'll come back and any big chunks, any large areas that are missing gel coat, we'll fill that with the watertight. And then we'll do some priming. And finally, we'll finish with perfection, the two-part polyurethane perfection. So it's a multi-step process that we're going to be going through. But cleaning is the first step. Preparation is 90% of the job. With spring a few weeks away here in the Northeast, the timing is perfect for this project. Jim and I set up outside Interlux's Union, New Jersey facility and get to work. The soap is concentrated, so two capfuls make plenty of suds for our sponges and brushes. After washing and a quick rinse, we're ready to apply the stain remover. We use a brush to apply the liquid to make sure we coat all the stains before leaving it on a few minutes to do the job. Removing any stains that are left after the washing is very important as the surface must be free of any contaminants. Not doing so will compromise the surface and prevent the paint from adhering. After rinsing, and just to make sure we get any debris that might still be left, we give the hull a quick sanding and a wipe down. Our next step is mixing the epiglass epoxy. For you do-it-yourselfers and first-timers, using the pump system to meter out the correct ratios will enable you to get the proper consistency. For this application, a ketchup-like thickness is required to enable the epoxy to not only penetrate into the repair, but to also seal the surface against any water infiltration, thus avoiding blistering and subsequent damage to the substrate. When using a squeegee to apply the epoxy, make sure enough is put onto the problem areas. A slight buildup is okay, as it'll be sanded smooth for painting. And the next step is to let it dry overnight. All right, we've let the epoxy dry overnight. It's not sticky or tacky anymore. We're gonna get to the dinghy right now with the sanders, make sure all the high spots are taken care of, also that there's no shiny spots. Once we're through with that, we're gonna wipe it down with the tack cloths, check our work, use a little filler, a little epoxy filler, sand that down, and we'll be ready to prime. For priming, we use a 1 8 inch nap roller followed by a brush stroke to even out the finish and prevent any orange peel. Orange peel is a defect in the surface finish. You can easily recognize it by its dimpled and bumpy texture, much like the skin of an orange. And unless you brush out the paint as it is being applied, as Jim and I are doing in this project, the finish will be ruined and cause a lot more work than expected. That's because the cure for this is nothing short of sanding everything down smooth and starting over. And just to be sure, we first roll and brush a test board to see how the paint sets up. Satisfied with the results, we're ready for the dinghy, rolling and brushing out and checking for any painter's holidays. After this coat dries, I lightly hand sand the surface with 220 grit paper to rough things up and follow that by a solvent tack cloth wipe down. Jim first wipes out the tray liner to get rid of any dust or dirt. To get the proper finish, we'll be using a tapered china bristle brush to smooth out the paint. Interlux's Perfection is a two-part polyurethane paint that provides a very durable, abrasion-resistant, hard coating designed to keep its color and gloss for a long time. 
It's an easy two to one mix that generally does not have to be thinned. The first part is stirred with a mixing stick, after which the curing agent, which is part two, is added. With both parts in our bucket, the paint is then blended and let to sit to settle out the bubbles, after which it is strained. And as we did with our prime coat, we give the paint a test run for flow and cover. Using the same technique, we roll and brush our final coat on, making sure not to miss a stroke. While we've had the luxury of painting indoors in a controlled environment, you can achieve the same results by taking the time with each step in the process. Okay, that just about finishes our second coat. The fine finish we got here can be yours, whether on a small dinghy like this one or on a larger project, by carefully following Interlux's directions, thoroughly preparing the surface, and by painting as early in the day as possible and as soon as the dew gets off the surface. It's also a good idea, if you're painting outdoors, to pick a dry day with little or no wind and make sure your yard neighbors will not be powering up the sanders in your area. And I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did doing it with you. We'll see you next time in PMY's Boatyard.